Hello, Dan Harvey here for Boris FX with an overview of the Power Mesh toolset in Mocha Pro 2021. In this session I'll be working in Autodesk Flame, but the functionality I'll be showing is available in most Mocha hosts. In summary, a new subplanar tracking mode which can measure flexible surface motion. In Flame's batch workspace I have a clip of some talent with a small tattoo to remove. I prepared a clean plate and a mat for the removal. Now I need to track the motion. I'll drag an open effects node into the schematic, select Mocha Pro from the drop down list and launch the Mocha UI in a floating window. I'll draw a shape round the talent's back with the magnetic spline tool, which automatically draws around high contrast edges. With the magnetic spline tool enabled, I'll turn down the detail level to reduce the number of vertices on the shape. Mocha 2021 features a new tracking option, Mesh, which subdivides the region of interest. I'll reduce the facet size to increase their number and enable adaptive contrast which aligns the facets to trackable picture content. The smoothness value determines the amount of tension in the mesh, low values for elastic surfaces, higher values for rigid. I'll enable Auto and let Mocha figure it out. Now, with Warp Spline enabled, I'll begin tracking. As I'm working on an older laptop here, I'll speed this part up. Now that the tracking is complete, I'll switch to the Stabilize tab where I can preview the results. If I enable All Motion, the standard Planar Perspective Stabilization is applied. If I enable Stabilize Mesh Unwarp and Scrub, we can see the track surface locked down to its reference frame, which I can update by adding the required frame to the frame list. This reference frame is then used for rendering and in any geometry exports. This is a useful workflow for extracting a stabilised image segment for matte painting before re-warping. The Use Matte option applies the current shape as a matte to hold out the effect if required, or to isolate the area being worked on in the viewer. I can also set the rendering quality here. I'll select High Quality, save the setup and exit back to Flame. I want to warp my clean plate to match the motion I've tracked on the talent's back. So I'll connect my clean plate and mat to Mocha and enable warp rendering. Now the whole image is warped along with a mat input. I'll connect my warp clean plate to the comp input, the original plate to the back, the warp mat to the mat input and play out the result. In the next example I'll try something a little more challenging. Beginning in Mocha Stand Alone where I've prepared a mesh for tracking. I'll stop before the occlusion comes into play, save my setup and continue tracking. Here we see the occluding hand interfering with the mesh track. I'll revert to before the track went to drift, hide the face shape for now and create a mesh shape to track the foreground hand. It's a good idea to go a little tighter with the shape on the foreground in order to avoid mesh points getting stuck on picture detail in the background plane at the shape edges. Now I'll animate the hand shape by tracking the mesh. Note how the shape follows the articulated motion of the hand. As the hand shape is further up the layer list, Mocha considers it to be nearer the camera and uses it as a holdout for the tracking on the shape below. When creating a track mat, it's a good idea to go a little looser with the shape to cover any shadows or ambient occlusion that might spoil the track on the background shape. The track mat overlay highlights the detail which is used for tracking the face shape. Now the track for the face shape is measured correctly. Mocha 2021 can export mesh data as an alembic geometry cache for use downstream. Now I'll tweak the mesh track shape for use as a holdout map for my final comp and export it as a flame G mask. In Flame's batch workspace I have my background plate of the talent and a scar image I want to comp over it. 
I'll add an action node and connect the foreground and background inputs. I'll right click for the contextual menu in action and import my Alembic file from Mocha. Next I'll select the camera in the Alembic scene. Here's the animated geometry. I'll select the Alembic geometry in the action schematic, select the scar image from the media list and apply it as a diffuse map. I'll adjust its orientation with its parent axis and set the blending mode. As I scrub through we can see the geometry UVs animating in sync with the background. Now I need to hold out the foreground hand, so I'll add a GMAS node in batch. I'll import the GMAS that I exported from Mocha, connect its output to the comp node mat input, add a little bit of blur and comp the hand back in from the original plate. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials on Mocha and the rest of the Boris Effects product family, check out the training pages at borisfx.com.